So what makes up a healthy network state? People who are radiating health. I have a question for you. Are people around you radiating health? And what does it mean to radiate health? What does it mean to make a stable foundation for ourselves as humans to build such ambitious projects as we're involved in, in the network state community? What does it mean to spiritually be prepared for the kind of challenges that are ahead of us? Obviously, there are challenges ahead of us. Can't deny that. And uh, how to protect ourselves from um, the downturns that we're going to be facing in the future and the challenges of the government's trying to take us down, to put us in jail or something like that. Um, how do we face that? You know, when I was in jail, the greatest thing that I learned is that importance of coming back to the heart, knowing that I'm actually not in jail, I'm in my own body. And whatever space I am taking in physical reality, it doesn't really matter so much as much as the psychological and emotional stability. Um, I can be in to protect myself from suffering, to protect myself from feeling less than, to protect myself from all these different forces that are uh, trying to put me down. Um, and I'm not saying that there are certain forces that are trying to put me personally down, but definitely as humanity, we're facing a lot of challenges right now um, in terms of um, our freedom. Freedom for sovereign health care, freedom of expression, freedom of communications, freedom of traveling freely, you know? Um, I believe that uh, in the future we will have no such thing as borders. I believe that in the future we'll be way more free humans. I believe in the future where God, this cover is very challenging for me. Um, I believe in the future that we'll live in the present moment fully without needing to think about our future and the survival and money and, you know, safety and security. Um, I believe in the future we will be experiencing a state of presence and love that is unconditional and we'll be treating, treating each other as equals. We'll be treating, treating each other as if we're these brothers and sisters and not competitors. Okay? Because right now, all I feel is that there is deep sense of competition happening for resources, competition happening for nice humans to be with, competition happening for um, our place in this reality. And uh, there shouldn't be any competition. Everyone needs to know their space, their place, their perfect place to be in this physical world. Um, everyone needs to feel welcomed and protected in this planet. Everyone needs to feel safe. Why don't we still feel safe right now? Because there are so many factors that are trying to put us down. The governments are not trying to protect us. 
are trying to control us. You see? And I believe in the network state movement, we're able to build governments that will actually be protecting people uh, from the old government systems, basically. <laughs> you know? And if we can do that, I think we'll really move far as community in terms of um, like advanced ways of operations. And why do I believe that telepathy is going to be the way to go? My whole work is uh, revolving around developing telepathic um, skills uh, because it's the safest way. But also, it takes um, a while to develop telepathic skills. Um, it's, it's not just like you wake up and then you speak with someone telepathically. You could, hopefully, maybe, at some point. But for now, we need to um, be very careful in observing our thoughts, our emotions, understand the difference between our thoughts and other people's thoughts, understand the difference between our emotional states and other people's emotional states, and not take other people's states as ours. You see? That's kind of the, the key skill in psychic work. If you're able to master that, understand where is yours and where is not yours, whoever that is, you're good. You're going to be good. Um, but the problem is that we're so heavily, let's say, medicated and um, with all the heavy metals in our bodies, with all the toxins, it's hard to tune in. It's hard to see how we're actually feeling and what are we thinking about. And we're always rushing to do something. We don't have really time to just pause and listen. And that should change. We should allow ourselves to just be, observe, and reflect. It's so important. Reflection. The kind of work that I've been doing the past five years specifically to uh, help myself analyze where I'm at, what's my role in the 3D reality, who am I, you know? And a reflection, it takes, um, it takes time, it takes um, a lot of attention, uh, it takes deeper understanding uh, of the surrounding uh, world and it does take a lot of curation the kind of people that we are bringing into our field inviting them to into our field um, in my life so many people have come they, they come and go you know they're quite uh, transient um, because uh, I curate, I choose who do I want to surround myself, who do I want to associate myself with in this physical world, in this physical reality, who do I want to support. Um, by supporting, I mean like really spending time with, listening, asking questions, being part of their life, inviting them to places, inviting them into my life. Um, being careful with them, you know? And um, I test people a lot. I have to, in order to understand who are the people who are capable of receiving what I am going to be giving in the next years. Because I'll be giving a lot. Imagine how many of these I've created.